Hello, today I'm going to talk about something which I haven't uh, done so far and that is uh, false hopes in the current health emergency. Now, uh, before I get any further, I will state my interest. I am a consultant to a supplements company, but of course that's got nothing to do with uh, what's happening at the moment. Now, for those of you out there who want to know anything related to health research, on the um, United States National Institutes of Health, they have a database uh, in which they claim is every report ever done, or not ever done, or done in the last 40 years, since 1980, on, uh, uh, on, on drugs, on um, all sorts of things related to health that has been done in the English language. Now, I'm interested in uh, homeopathy and how what uh, the pen potential uh, benefits are from certain foodstuffs, so I use it quite frequently. And uh, for those of you who may be on any form of medication, I suggest you do look at it to s so you can see uh, what the potential uh, downsides are to whatever it is you're taking. Now I start. I got interested in this because when my father uh, had uh, cancer and he was, it was getting worse and the doctor was saying one thing, his symptoms were another, the doctor said that the two things weren't lim um, linked to the uh, drugs he was taking but because I read the research I was able to say no that's not the case. The drug you can see here is something called hydroxychloroquine. Now you'll have heard this mentioned uh, by uh, Trump and other people as the cure for the current virus which is going around and this is based on uh, a very small study and that's what I'm gonna sort of tell you about right now. Now this drug is used for malaria and other treatments. It's been on the go I think since around 1955. This uh, is marketed under the brand name Planquenil. Now uh, what the problem we've got now is that uh, the French study is being touted as a cure for the virus. Now you can actually read the study. I've put a link on it down below. And uh, now, when you do a study, what you'd normally do is uh, on anything which is pharmaceutical, uh, you do is what's called a double blind randomized. So let's say you get two groups of people who are more or less the same, uh, you sp split them up, one group gets a placebo, the other group gets a drug which is being uh, tested. And Ideally, also, the doctors who are administering the drugs will not know the difference. Of course, I mean, doctors aren't stupid and they probably will realise that there is a slight difference between one and the other. But the objective of that is to ensure that one group doesn't get special treatment of the other. Now, in the case of these, uh, this wasn't the case. Now, I do appreciate that these uh, doctors in France did the right thing and they've given uh, an area for f further study uh, which can be advanced, but this was not uh, what we would normally consider to be a particularly scientific uh, way of, uh, of doing things. It's just, it's, it's the beginning, it's the first stage where we've got something here and then we can take it a little bit further. Now, uh, so uh, in the French case, what they were doing was that they were using uh, this uh, um, hydroxychloroquine with an antibiotic which, which is called acithromycin and uh, that using the two of things together. Now, it were, there was a study done in China as well, which suggested there may be some uh, link between the two, uh, which could uh, potentially help virus sufferers, but another study was done in the Hôpital Saint-Louis in Paris and uh, uh, these are tiny numbers in these studies because the first one was 26, the se this one is only 11 people, uh, but in, in the one in the Hôpital Saint-Louis the, um, the group uh, was, um, the people who were suffering much worse and it found that there, there was no help whatsoever. Now, uh, of the patients in the, uh, the Paris test, uh, so we had one patient die, two transferred to the ICU, 
uh, another had to be removed from the treatment due to serious complications. Now, in the one which is being uh, toted by the uh, uh, the conspiracists as being a cure, well, you've got of the 26 people in it, uh, one died and three ended up in intensive uh, care. So uh, that's statistically not a particularly uh, good outcome. Now, it is possible that um, a, we could be getting towards a cure from another way. There is somebody in New York who's uh, made himself quite a name on the internet. Uh, he's a Lubavitch uh, doctor. Lubavitch is an Orthodox Jewish uh, sect. And uh, so he's largely treating people within uh, his own community. He's using zinc as well. It could be that uh, you know, the, the, the drug or the anti uh, antibiotic is sort of breaking open the virus and the zinc is doing the killing of it. It could be. I don't know. I'm just suggesting that. that so, uh, but uh, I would like to say this. If people go out buying it um, en masse, that creates a shortage of a drug which people who uh, urgently need it for malarial treatment and they cannot get it. We have the same situation with the toilet roll. People stocking up on it en masse. The difference of course here is that people don't get the malarial treatment. They can die. Now, so to quote Trump, what have you got to lose by taking it? I don't know. Maybe you've got nothing to lose. But think of the person who's got malaria. That person has a lot to, lot to lose. Thanks for listening.